I'm not going to cover the basics of EQ here. I assume if you're ready to try your hand at mastering, you're already familiar with the use of EQ in recording and mixing, and the basic configurations like graphic versus parametric, or peaking versus shelving response. Instead, I'll focus more on the different types of EQs you might find, and the differences in approach you might take in a mastering situation as opposed to recording and mixing use. First off, while there are dedicated mastering EQs out there, any EQ can be used for mastering purposes. Since we're talking about mastering in the box, I'll break them down into three types of EQ plugins you're likely to come across. Standard EQs, like the kind that are included with every DAW, basically channel EQs. Character EQs, which are designed to sound and behave like analog circuits, usually vintage analog designs like tube-based models or passive EQ designs. And linear phase EQs, which are often bundled with mastering suites and targeted at applications where clarity of sound is prized. Now, none of these is necessarily the best in every situation, despite what marketing might sometimes suggest. They can all serve well for mastering use. But they all will sound different, even with identical settings dialed up. In fact, pretty much all EQs will sound different, even if they're of the same type, just due to specific differences in design. If you use EQ for recording and mixing, then you already knew that. Character EQs are designed to capture the sound of analog circuit designs. This means that they will, by design, impart their own sonic character on any signals running through them. Sometimes, even when you don't dial up any boost or cut. They're often based on classic analog EQ designs, like the venerable Pultec EQP-1A, a passive design with tube circuitry known for its inherent analog warmth. This EQ is one company's take on that Pultec model. Now, a lot of the time, in mastering, you want your tweaks to have as subtle an effect as possible in the mix. But that doesn't mean you can't use this kind of EQ to impart a little warmth. You don't have to dial up drastic settings. You don't even have to dial up as much of an obvious change as I've done here. If the plugin is well designed, the subtle flavor of a typical character EQ should come through even with minimal processing. Now, the standard type of EQ you'll find, and probably will get used the most, is the typical channel EQ that comes with every DAW. By design, these are sometimes referred to as minimum phase EQs. I'll explain that in a minute. These general purpose designs are fine for any application, from recording to mixing to mastering. In a lot of mastering suites, you'll often find a linear phase EQ. The idea is that this type of design will be more transparent than a standard minimum phase EQ. Okay, a little explanation. All analog EQs, and most digital EQs, produce phase shift when you dial up a boost or cut. Phase shift delays the frequencies just above and below the center frequency, affecting the harmonics in that range, and subtly altering the tone over and above the intended tonal change you're trying to achieve with your EQ settings. This is normal. It's not inherently good or bad. And we're all used to it from using traditional EQs. But some digital EQs employ extra processing to compensate for this artifact eliminating the usual phase shift. These are your linear phase EQs. Without the usual phase shifts, these EQs may, in fact, sound more transparent, especially on already mixed material, like you'd be processing in a mastering session. In some cases, they might allow you to dial up a subtle tonal change to part of the frequency spectrum with as little effect as possible on other areas of the mix. That's one reason they're often included with mastering bundles. But they do come with some caveats. The extra processing, to compensate for the phase shift, results in higher latencies. And a side effect of that compensation is that a linear EQ may, if used more heavily, soften transients a little. But with small tweaks, as I've suggested are most appropriate for mastering, the differences between regular minimum phase and linear phase EQs are small and subtle. Either can do a good job. Ultimately, your ears will be your guide. Next up, I'll compare these different EQ types and talk a bit about general EQ usage and mastering. <laughs> 